Hello everybody, this is GamePro24X, and we have finally done it. We have finally figured out how to do infinity farming in Metal Gear Survive. So, let's get started. So you're going to go into your possessions, and you're going to make sure you have nothing. No food, no bottles, just no dead weight. You can keep on some of your uh, medical supplies, but, you know, that that's just about it. Um, I'm taking out some food so I can eat it real quick, that way I stay 100% on my hunger and whatnot, and also benefit from the buff. In your inventory, you want to make sure you at least have a weapon to break something with. You want to make sure you have absolutely nothing and the lightest gear possible. Preferably gear that will give you more in like endurance and whatnot. That way you can run a lot faster. Or a lot longer, I should say. If you have the small survival bag and the medium survival bag, put them on because that will allow you to carry more weight. And we're going to go ahead and just quickly fast forward through this entire video. So there's going to be a lack of audio, but I am going to put some music in the background. That way you guys can at least have some sound. But yes, um, all the points that I'm showing you right now in this area is points where you would normally find materials. But obviously since they've been picked, they are not there. So I'm going to quickly go around to every teleporter and show you guys a live, uh, pseudo live demonstration of all the teleporters before and of course after my little trick. So as you can see here at teleport 2, there is nothing here. Um, I'm pulling out my idra that way you guys can see the time. That way you know that the time skips are at least in line. Because I did, you know, trim this video. That way I can cut off a lot of fat. So here we go in the next area. Again, barely anything. There is a pile of goods, but the pile of goods actually have a separate timer. But I'll get into that a little bit later. So at this transport location, everything is respawned. But I'm not going to grab anything just yet. I want to still show you guys the current state of all the other ones before I touch anything. So here we are at this teleporter and as you can see everything is barren except for that one top shelf full of steel. So remember that or just you know remember any of the teleporters. Here you go here's my time again that way you guys know that this is all in one go not just time skipped or whatever. So again Another area, fully cleaned out, but there is a pile of goods, which, again, it is on a separate timer, so they don't really count. There we go, just showing you guys some more empty rooms, which will not be empty in like a few minutes. Alright, so now we came back here, and now it's time to collect everything. So, um, when you're doing this method, make sure you always just collect everything in the area. Uh, even the pile of goods because it will respawn eventually, but it will not respawn at the same rate as everything else So you want to have your melee weapon that way you can break shit open, you know grab as much as you could and When you're done, you're gonna head back to your base and you want to do that every single time Doesn't matter if you only grab like a few items here and there going back to the base will more than ensure you that you have your or that the uh, materials will respawn All right, so uh, we're going to do one last round, and as you noticed, some things actually have shown up again. However, wait a little bit longer and you'll see, like magic, everything come right back in this instant. So we're going to go to this little spot that I like going to. It's near Code Talker's Mansion. Now, you can go to Code Talker's Mansion if you want to get some extra materials, but I would say, uh, as for a bare minimum, you want to loot all the transporters, come right over here, and also loot the area where you fight the uh, Frostbite boss or where you find uh, Seth and such in the story but yeah I'm gonna fast forward this because it's not too terribly long but you know it is annoying that I keep getting grabbed by grabbers and such we're also gonna stop right here at this little tiny tent there's a few materials but again all this stuff is gonna contribute heavily towards ensuring that you're gonna have all your materials respawn at all of your locations all right here we go we're gonna just speed this up again even more that way you guys don't have to sit here and watch all the BS. And you know, this was originally a 20 minute video, but you know, thanks to all this editing, it's now gonna be trimmed down to like at least 10. So this is why I decided to do this. I didn't want it to be too long. So in this area, there's a lot of like chromium and just other high grade ma uh, materials here. So, you know, grab everything here, even the pile of goods. Now the little areas where there's like dirty water, you can completely skip that. There is no need for you to do that. There's other places for you to get water, and it does not affect this at all. So you can just completely skip those. It's nothing but dead weight. So 
yeah, grab everything else and then just hurry on back over. So yeah, I gotta run through the force. The one shitty thing about the grabbers is that even though you, I use my invisibility, my, my active camo, um, they'll still just grab me. And the reason why is because they, they activate by sound. So if you're if you're walking a little too fast, they'll grab towards the area. That's why being invisible doesn't work on them because, well, they don't have to visually see you to grab you. So it is annoying, um, but if you do just pay attention to the threat ring, you'll notice that you, know, you can just move around them. And oh look! What what is all this? Everything just magically came back? Huh. Well there you have it. So while I was out over there, I think um, if I remember correctly, this was one of the first areas I came to to collect all the materials. And the final area was gonna be that um, base that's right near Code Talker's mansion. And once you grab that, the whole process resets all over again. And would you look at that? Got everything, went back to Mother Base. And now we're gonna go back to the previous areas. So in this area, you do notice there's some items that came back. Some of them came back, uh, but not everything. So we're gonna leave everything alone for now. And I'm gonna go to the very next area. So once again, you know, I just, you need to memorize your exact route because I just, recorded this and I just started guessing on where everything was but there was a few items that I just decided to grab because whatever went to area 2 again area 2 is still barren but now we're back at the FOB and as you guys remember at the beginning of the video when I came over here there was absolutely no materials but now when you look on these shelves what do you know it now we got some more materials right here so we're gonna go around collect everything Um, you also need to pick these wild berries. I don't know why, but they kind of mess with the uh, the whole process in general. So just don't forget to pick them. Now we're back here, and like I said, um, as you guys remember from the beginning of the video, when I first came here, everything was completely gone. And you also want to keep note that um, I don't really need to check the time anymore because you guys can easily see my food and thirst. Or my hunger and thirst so that right there is a good indicator that you know again I'm not time skipping or anything like that this is all real time I'm just trimming out a lot of the load times and whatnot so once you grab all your stuff go back to the FOB go to the very next one you got to keep doing that over and over and look at that we got some more stuff that we can break that we can take so pretty easy materials once again, once you grab everything, go back to FOB and go to the next area. So I keep on checking area two because again, I keep, I don't remember the order, but you know, you in time there, more stuff will show up. So we're back up here again. And now when it was just a few boxes and such, now everything just came right back. So now it's time to loot. And there we go, that shelf that had just a bunch of steel on top, well now it was just full of other materials as well. Back to FOB, and now we're going right back out there. So now we're going to the area that I mentioned to you guys before, where you need... This is the area where you fight the frost bite uh, boss. So. This is all the stuff that you would want to loot um, uh, after you grab all the items uh, from the teleporter areas. So you want to come in here as well, grab all this stuff, and the other areas you want to go are to that little camp that I went to earlier, uh, right near, somewhat near Code Talker's mansion, and then you want to also go to the base that's closer to Code Talker's mansion as well. Again, you can go to his mansion and grab some stuff and come right back, but you want to be careful because there is a lot of stuff and you will be overweight pretty quick. But this is all to ensure that more stuff on the map will respawn. Alright, and now to end off this video, we're going back to area 2 and would you look at that, everything came right back. 
So yeah, you have to be, so like I said, make sure you memorize your whole route. Pick one, go all the way to the final one, and then start picking the, the ones from the outside bases, outside of the uh, drills, or sorry, outside of the transport areas, and then you'll be good. And there you have it. So it's a pretty easy thing to do, surprisingly. So all you need to do is, well, one, make sure you have all the teleporters ready to go. Um, this does work uh, in the Afghanistan map as well, but the reason why I chose Africa is because it's a much smaller map and you can get easier results through there as well, on top of higher grade materials. So you plan out your route, you go to every single transport, pick up everything that you see there, go back to base every time you do that with every single transport. Because one, it'll empty your pockets, and two, it's just kind of how the method works. Because if you try going to multiple transports, you'll notice some things don't come back uh, in an orderly fashion. So you need to go back every single time. Now, thankfully, the load times are very short, so it's not too big of an issue. Once everything from every transporter has been picked up, then go loot stuff like the ruins or other villages. And just do that to like maybe one to two different areas and grab as much stuff as possible then you want to make sure you go back to every teleporter in the same exact order as you originally did now if nothing showed up then you might have to go loot another village or so then stuff will show up but again as long as you're going back to the base then going to the teleporter it shouldn't be too much of an issue so here are some additional notes that i have just stumbled upon while researching how the respawn times of everything so in the game it naturally takes about three and a half to four hours for stuff to just respawn if you were just chilling at base and i don't have an exact number but when i looked at the stopwatch it was within that time however because of this method you literally don't have to do that you don't have to wait at all you just need to go loot somewhere else and then more stuff from other areas will respawn however if you do want to just have a nice fresh start, you want everything on the map to be reloaded, wait four hours. Now, I know that's gonna sound like a lot, but you know if you're doing other stuff in the meantime, or you're at least making sure your character is eating, uh, because he will die if you will if you go to AFK. But yeah, if you just want to ensure that you have a nice clean fresh start, then you're gonna need to do that. And yes, it's four IRL hours. No amount of sleeping in game or anything like that is gonna alter that, sadly. Also, there is a material limit you can have in your storage. It is 10,000. You cannot, well, you can't even reach 10,000, you'll reach 9,999. But yes, that is the cap. And when, when I told my other friend about this, and he was doing this he quickly maxed out on iron really fast and he had like more iron with than he knew what to do with so keep that in mind now you may be wondering well what happens if you reach the cap well it doesn't deposit anything into your storage i think that's what he told me i have never reached the cap myself which you know i'll definitely will after this method but basically you just can't hold on to it anymore I think the game has it gives you some choice to get rid of them or whatever, but yeah, you just can't hold on to more than 10,000. And there was nothing you could do to change that, because the iron consists of one item slot. You can't have multiple item slots of the same item, like, that. that's it. Like, nothing will change that, so it's 10,000 for everything. Now, probably the biggest question everyone's asking me is, is this legit? Well, yeah. I mean, there's literally no manipulation whatsoever. You're not switching saves or anything like that, like in the previous uh, Infinity Farm on Metal Gear Solid 5. This is all mechanically, legitimately programmed into the game. It's just you, we finally figured out how things start to respawn and loop around. So there you have it. That is how you perform Infinity Farming in Metal Gear Survive. I do not think they would ever patch this because, well, why would they? It's like if they made the times longer or whatever, then that's all All it's going to really do is just hurt the longevity of the game if people can't get any materials anymore. So, yeah, I don't really foresee that in the future whatsoever. But yeah, I'm pretty shocked that I was able to figure this one out. Um, I know it took a little while, but at least now the future player generation will be able to enjoy that and not have to worry too much about materials. 
Anyways, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoy the new method. I hope you guys enjoy the grind. Um, it's not that bad, really. It's it's pretty quick. But yeah, um, if you guys ever feel like it, I have a Patreon account if you ever feel like supporting me. And if you ever need to find anybody to play Survive with, you can always join my Discord. Um, you know, people are pretty friendly there, especially when it comes to Survive. So you have nothing to fear. Anyways, this is GamePro24X. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe for some more Metal Gear Survive content. Tell stories about this one, boss.